Hi, I'm Katie, and I'm here at the Aquarium Pyramid at Moody Gardens. We're here to learn about seals and sea lions. Let's go seal what they're up to. Today I'm talking to Maggie. What do you do here at Moody Gardens? I'm one of the biologists that takes care of the seals and the penguins. So we do pretty much anything that those guys need on a daily basis. We take care of their exhibit, we get all their foods ready, um, we do all the training with those guys, um, enrichment, all the back and forth that we need for the seals and the penguins to be as happy and healthy as they can be here. What's the difference between a sea lion and a seal? Well, there's a couple differences. Um, one of the easiest things to see, especially if you can see their head and their faces or their ears. Um, sea lions and fur seals have external ears just like we do that stick out from the sides of their heads. Harbor seals, on the other hand, don't. They have sort of an opening where you can see where their ear is, um, but they don't have an external ear. And the other thing that's really easy to tell apart is the way that they move on land. Um, harbor seals, the smaller guys, do what we call galumping. It's sort of a, making an inchworm motion along the ground. And the fur seals and sea lions will actually use all of their flippers, both their front and their rears, to walk around on land. Can you tell us a bit about the sea lions here? Yep, we actually have two California sea lions. That's our pretty much our largest animal and our smallest animal. Our male Dino, um, he's about 1,000 pounds right now. It goes anywhere from 800 to 1,000, depending on the time of year for him. And our female California sea lion named Squirt, um, she's about 170 pounds right now. And she's uh, just three years old, so she's still growing. And she's certainly going to get a little bit bigger. Um, and she's actually completely blind. So that's one thing that people will be able to notice about her. Um, she does, uh, she was born that way. Um, so that's, you'll be able to see the differences there, especially in the way that we interact with her. Uh, we have one northern fur seal. His name's Chewy. Um, he's uh, sort of middle-aged right now, <laughs> about 300 to 350 pounds. Um, but the males of that species can get up to 600 or 700 pounds when they're full grown. And um, we also have two harbor seals right now, uh, Porter and Presley, a male and a female. Uh, Porter is uh, the lighter colored one. He's sort of gray with darker spots. And he is generally um, around 175 to 200 pounds. Uh, Presley, our female, is a opposite coloration. She's actually dark with lighter spots on her. Um, and she's a little bit still growing as well. She's a bit younger. So she right now is uh, about 200 pounds, but she could get up to 250 or 300 pounds as she gets older. So Squirt's blind. How does she react to her surroundings and toys? Um, she does really well with that. Um, you know, they do think that she was born blind and she actually stranded at just a couple months old and that's how we were able to get her here at Moody Gardens. So um, because she was born that way, she really doesn't know anything different than that. So, you know, her the first time that she's exploring a new place, she does have to go a little bit slower because she can't see where she's going. She has to use those vibrissae on her muzzle there to feel her way around as well as her flippers to sort of see where everything is. Once she knows where everything is, she is fast. That's sort of her only speed is go. <laughs> so she once she learns her surroundings, she has no problem taking advantage of every space that she has, um, and it really doesn't seem to bother her at all. You know, as far as finding the toys, once she finds them, she'll play with them for hours. Sometimes she'll take them from us or just come across them in the exhibit. <laughs> How does training help them? Well, it helps them basically in keeping them, you know, mentally stimulated, but it actually helps us even more than that. It makes it a lot easier for us to take care of them. You know, these guys are, most of them, bigger than we are, and we can't make them do anything that they don't want to do without getting hurt. So the best way to combine all that is to use some training. So basically, um, in a nutshell, what we do is when they do the right thing, we reinforce them for it so that they're more likely to do it again. It makes it much easier for us to take care of them, especially when they're helping uh, you know, us and participating in their own health care. So if we need them to get on a scale, they've been trained to get up on the scale and hold still until we can get the weight to register. We can look in their eyes, check their ears, um, put eye drops in, we can brush their teeth, we can even give them their vaccines and do their annual physicals completely with them help. What are some of the challenges the seals face? Uh, well, you know, here they really don't have any challenges. We have a sort of tell them and they I don't think they agree, but they're quite spoiled. Very pampered and they don't have to worry about anything. Um, their counterparts in the wild though certainly do. 
Um, they have lost breeding habitats. There's a lot of places where tourism is being introduced and that's sort of affecting their natural habitat. Um, you know, people that are out fishing for food are getting the same kinds of fish that the seals and sea lions would be getting as well. So they're finding that they are having to, you know, search longer and farther to get food. Um, than they have in the past. Um, so overfishing is certainly a, pro a problem. Also pollution. Um, a lot of times we see these guys um, that strand those that aren't like squirt who's blind maybe have some fishing net stuck around them or some sort of entanglement um, or a fishing line even in their mouth that they've caught a hold of. So that kind of stuff all does make it harder for them you know, to survive out in the wild. Are they endangered in the wild? Um, there are some species that are for sure. Um, as far as the guys that we have, the northern fur seal are the most endangered. Those guys were hunted almost to complete extinction um, quite, quite a few years ago because of all the fur that they have. They make for great pelts and also for, you know, people wanting to make clothing out of them and stuff like that. So those guys are very endangered in the wild, yes. How can we help? Well, um, there's quite a few things that people can do. You know, just recycling is a big thing. It's a pretty simple thing that a lot of people can do. It keeps a lot of the trash out of their natural habitats and off the beaches where these guys are going to be found. Um, also, things like um, coming here to Moody Gardens. You know, when you go to visit your local zoo and aquarium, most of those places are donating some of the money to conservation. So, by going to your local zoo and learning about the animals, you're actually helping the animals in the wild. And you're able to contribute to their well-being as well, which is something that we do here as well. What is it about the seals that make you smile all the time? <laughs> oh, that could be a long question and answer there. Um, I think the fact that they're so curious and inquisitive, um, you know, even after being here for many years, these guys still do things that surprise me. So it's always nice to see them, you know, really learn a behavior when they figure something out that you're trying to teach them. Um, also seeing what toy they like to play with that day. Sometimes they do crazy things and we never know what they're going to do. So I think the fact that um, it's never the same thing here every day, there's always something that they're doing that encourages us. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoyed learning about the seals and sea lions as much as I did. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.